what's going on guys welcome back so i hope you guys had a good trading session today and uh, the markets met with a bit of an upside towards the very first uh, few minutes of the morning before we got um hawkish comments uh suggesting that you know they're going to do or speed up the reduction of the balance sheet okay so that's that's what probably the markets are trying to anticipate coming into tomorrow because if you guys if you guys are aware tomorrow is the release of the meeting minutes from the meeting that happened a couple of weeks ago and so it's a pretty important event tomorrow please do keep your eyes open for that um as the markets will move either up or down or continue in its sideways correction now before we dive into the analysis guys consider subscribing to the channel and give this video a thumbs up as it'll help the channel grow thank you so much now the spy in our bullish count we're still suggesting that this is still a triangle now it's it's going to invalidate soon should we continue on lower uh during the um, the future session or the the, um, the overnight session rather and so we're going to look at another way structure just in case that happens but the main thing to take away from this count should we continue in this range is that we want to maintain a bit above the wave one high at 440.96 why is that? Because per LA wave guidelines, if you guys are not aware, LA wave guidelines suggest that the wave four cannot retrace beyond the territory of wave one. All right. There cannot be an overlap and a close below it. OK, so we need to maintain a bid above this zone in order for this wave structure to remain intact. Otherwise, if that happens, then I'm going to show you guys a wave structure that I was working on over the weekend and that I present to you guys yesterday on my nightly video and also this morning's uh, live stream so if you didn't get to catch that don't worry i'm going to show you guys today anyway so you know i i am anticipating that this trades sideways so down in c d and e holding the 50 the 23.6 percent retracement at 450.93 okay so levels to watch key 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 level actually is this wave one all right as an alternative right either way our alternate count number two which is the bearish count is suggesting that the wave three completed here anyway on January, the same thing as in the main count, we have one, two, three, four into the five of wave A. Okay. It's hidden somewhere here. There you go. And then we got the A, B, one, two, three, four, and five. And as you can clearly see, I've been suggesting and have been pretty, pretty, um, sort of holding a firm ground that this can still be at play. Okay, this zone was a key resistance for the market. As you can clearly see, we have three levels of trend. Okay, so if you guys are not aware or haven't caught up yet, right, I have color coded my wave degrees. So we have the intermediate degree, which is the green, and its associated FIB levels, which is also in green. Same thing goes with the, with the minor degree and FIB levels being uh, blue and the minor degree and so on and so forth. So. For that reason, we have three levels of trend. The intermediate degree at 786, which is 463. We have the wave five here meeting the 786. And we have the 1618, which is the wave C compared to the wave A and B at 465.15. So that zone, three levels of trend forming a confluence area, gave, gave the market resistance. And therefore, we're not pushing on lower. Now, how this compares and where we can sort of find the middle ground for the two the, the main count and the bearish count here is that a break this this count will be confirmed at the break of the wave a which means that the wave a is the wave one here on the bullish count okay so same zone same level we have to keep our eyes open for now what is that other count that will give sort of the um what's the word that will give that would allow for this break okay and that can restructure this entire decline so let me take let me take you let me walk you through it real quick and i'll show you what that looks like now this is similar to what the uh cues looks like right and i think this is also at play because if the cues have completed well let me just backtrack here real quick so the third wave again completed in January the fourth. We got the A, B, and C to the W, A, B, C to the X, and A, B, C to the Y of wave four. Now the C truncated, all right. We did not breach the wave A. We didn't, we didn't make a low, so that's the same thing that happened in the Qs, and we are calling that to be the low over there. So why not call it the low over here as well? So for that reason, this is valid. Now out of 
the March 8 low, we got the first wave, ABC to the 2. And we can clearly count five waves up to the wave 3, pull back into the wave 4. All right. And then we got our final fifth wave into the intermediate degree wave 1. Now, this count allows us to break south of this wave B or wave 1 on the bullish count and wave A on the bearish count. Okay, because the wave two can retrace beyond that zone, but it's just as long as we remain north of the origin of wave one. But what I anticipate that this will happen should the markets continue on lower, this is what I'm going to fall back on. Okay, and that we need to hold a zone between the 23 and the 38. So 450 and 443 is a range that I am keeping close eye on for the rest of the week. Okay, this will form as a zigzag. So we have the A, the B at the 618, and down in C. So where will C come in play? Let's take a retracement, or an extension rather, and we're going to take a measurement from the high of wave A to the low wave A, projected to the top of wave B, all right? And we're going to look at equality. So you can see that equality comes in at a confluence level between the 38 and the 100%. So wave C likely will come down towards the wave, uh, sorry, the 445 to the 430, 443, which is why I'm saying that this zone, I am anticipating it for it to be some sort of bounce area, okay? And if we take this same blue box and we project it all the way back out into its price uh, history, we can see that it comes into confluence with several key support and resistance areas, right? Back here, it was resistant on August of 21, resistance on September of 21, so uh, resistance here, support back here on December of 21, support, um, resistance, minor support, didn't hold, resistance, broke below it, resistance, and now we are trying to retest it again. So this area should be of, of high interest, okay, for us to anticipate the market's reversal. Okay, guys, so you have your understanding of the marching orders. We gotta, we we know what we gotta do. We have to be very diligent and agile as to what the markets are planning because if this is in fact the next rally, then we have to be on board for a trade relatively soon. Okay, so I'm gonna take you over to the queues. Um, in the queues, you know, just as I was mentioning, you know, we got truncation here, except that it did slightly make a new low. All right. So that's why this one is valid more so than what the spy looks like, but nevertheless, it's still similar way structure. So the wave four completed on March the 14th, one, two, three, ABC down to the four between this range of 461 to the 452. All right. We have a zigzag or a flat correction. We have to wait to see as, as it unfolds right now, it looks like it's going to be a zigzag. Um, and then we get the last push on higher to the wave five of wave one. Now that'll pair up nicely with the with what we're looking at in the queues. Um, sorry, in the spy. Okay, and that we're looking for the final completed wave one. Actually, the wave two is is probably uh, at play here. Actually, right? Yeah, there we go. So the wave one completed, while the queues are looking to complete its wave one. Okay, so chances are that the queues are going to be lagging behind the spy. Uh, while the spy makes you know a break to to its new high on the wave three, okay guys. As an alternative, just like in the queues, sorry, just like in the spy, we have um, the ABC at the six one eight. Okay, the B is a retracement of sorry, the six one eight is a retracement from the entire wave A decline. So we have the A, the B, one two three four five to the C to the B at three seventy one forty seven. All right, guys. So that's pretty evident that this was resistance. It was support. Um, you know, if we can even hover over here, that's still resistance and support areas back there. So likely that we continue on lower should we break those levels that I mentioned early in the video. Now let's take a quick look at the SMH. Now SMH is breaking below what appeared to be our main source of, of support. But Given the fact that this is now a zigzag or A, B, and C, we found resistance at the 38.2 exactly, right? At the $270 region, as we mentioned in this morning's video or, or um, live stream. So the A, the B, we're looking for equality in the wave C. So if we take a quick extension, okay, we see that equality will come in where? 
equality would come in a bit south of the 618. Okay, guys, a bit south of the 618. We could go towards the 618 anyway, also on the small degree, all right, or even the 786, um, which, as you can see, is within the range of the higher degree wave two. However, we do not, under any circumstances, want to see price action this entire decline. All right, this three wave advance fall short uh, fall beyond this zone right now it still looks to be unfolding in three waves right we have the a we have the pullback in b and we have the pullback in c so you know it's it's coming to a pretty good support zone okay and a good risk to reward area because should we continue on lower then we have this low to leave it as our risk okay and our profits should be 100% extension of this wave one at 317, hypothetically speaking. Okay, hypothetically speaking. Now, the XLY, which is another industry group with it within the uh, S the SP or the SPY ETF, is also a chart that I am really, really cautious and, and aware of that this is displaying a counter trend reversal from the entire rally that happened from January to the lows here in February. Now, we have evidence of a one two three four and five to the wave c but we we did not manage to continue on higher okay with with an aggressive impulsive structure that we're now looking for price action to continue on lower now this is a 12 percent weighted on the s p etf or the spy and the smh is also heavy in the tech industry group so these are interesting charts that we have to keep our eyes open for because we cannot break this low all right, and last, uh, let's take a look at the IWM. No major changes here. We're still looking for a break above the 211, the 208. And last but not least, the Dow. Let's take a look at the Dow real quick. Um, the main count in the Dow will suggest that we are completing the way for here. So the one, ABC2, okay, three, ABC down and four to the 38.2. Now we're very, very close to the invalidation. So for that reason, we want to see price action hold rather above the wave one high at 341.30 okay otherwise we will allow for this to be the one two three okay as you can see here this is a flat forming as a zigzag the guideline of alternation is at play and then we go on to the wave five all right guys so tomorrow should be a pretty good um sort of tell as to what we can anticipate coming in for the rest of the week and for april historically speaking april is a bullish month for the markets for the last and for the past 25 years so yeah so um if you guys have any questions leave your comments down below look forward to hearing from you otherwise thank you so much i'll see you guys tomorrow